Hello, everybody. Um, it's my pleasure to be uh, again with all of you concerning the second uh, on live presentation uh, on the have been selected topic by all of you isolation recording, uh, bioprospecting, and the conservation of fungi. Um, this is uh, one of the most important um, uh, presentation for all of you of interested uh, of interested people from different countries, uh, how they can isolate uh, environmental uh, fungi, how they can record it, how they can bioprospect um, uh, bioactive material from them, and how they can conserve fungi. Um, uh, we can say that. Um, um, uh, why we study fungi? As we described before, uh, we study fungi or we studied fungi. Uh, 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 we studied fungi as um, the most important biodiverse group uh, after insect. If you go to th this diagram, you will find fungi here with a brown color uh, in front of the um, uh, sky blue color of insect. So. Uh, fungi considered the most important um, um, uh, group of uh, of uh, organism after insect, and also why? Because um, fungi all the time producing uh, potent uh, and uh, uh, very important uh, materials. Um, these uh, materials were uh, were uh, have been used. All the time by uh, human, um, uh, we can uh, uh, find this uh, paper of uh, uh, 50 uses of fungi published by uh, um, Kevin Heidi uh, et al. in 2019, maybe. Uh, he mentioned, as they mentioned, how we can use fungi as biofertilizer uh, in the field of uh, biocontrol. Uh, uh, in the field of uh, producing novel compound in pharmaceutics and in in um, pharmacological studies, how we can use microfungi um, as a product in uh, um, uh, in uh, um, 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 antibiotics uh, on uh, on different categories of. Uh, uh, um, chemicals it looks like citric acid production uh, a lot a lot a lot of things we are using fungi in our um, life and the, the most important thing uh, behind all of these is decomposition as I mentioned in my uh, previous presentation last week so recently um, a paper is just released months ago they just said fungi uh, are um, a, a potent source for um, uh, um, different um, categories of industry um, in the field of uh, agriculture, in the field of energy, electricity, electronics, um, paper and bulb production, construction, um, in transport, in pharma, as food, in textile, computer, aerospace, shipbuilding, water, chemicals, uh, uh, cars and automotives, all all the human um, uh, needs covered by fungi. So why we study fungi? Because fungi are fungi. It's a very 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 potent organism sharing our life everything. Um, you can just go to your uh, home and think uh, how how many fungi you are using per day. You will find yes. Uh, you will find uh, Rickford uh, cheese, you will find beer, uh, you will find wine. Um, if you're drinking wine or beer, uh, you will find um, a penicillin uh, produced by um, um, uh, penicillium and blah, 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 blah. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of product came from fungi. So why we study fungi? Because fungi are fungi. Um, so... What are the difference between fungi and bacteria? Um, fungi are characterized by unique features. One of them is cell wall composed of chitin, chitosin, mannosine, and cellulose. And in comparison, I think this is given fungi one of the unique features 
And the white Robert Whitaker in 1969 emerged the fifth kingdom as the cell wall of fungi is completely off chitin. And chitin is a uh, bully uh, compound. Uh, the, 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 the bulk of the compound is in acetyl glucose amine. So the building unit is in acetyl glucose amine for chitin. And chitin is not only in fungi, but it's already in uh, carstitia and so, uh, some uh, other crabs. And uh, it is not um, uh, unique for fungi. So if you're going to estimate the total fungal content in the soil through chitin, it will give a um, fake figure. Why? Because it's a chitin or chitinaceous material will indicate it directly uh, for other organisms, uh, not uh, specifically for, um, uh, for um, fungi. Uh, one of the more important thing uh, in fungi is the presence of ergosterol uh, in comparison with eukaryote uh, as cholesterol. So ergosterol is a unique feature of uh, plasma membrane in fungi. So if you're going to isolate ergosterol from soil to estimate fungi, sure, you will estimate the total uh, fungal content of soil through ergosterol because it's unique, unique feature um, uh, in comparison with with other uh, uh, um, compound looks like chitin. Um, fungi are characterized by low content of DNA and high content of RNA with low genomic size uh, in comparison with other eukaryote uh, organism. Uh, behavior of nucleus during cell division um, some also preferring to say we have a prokaryote and eukaryote organism. Prokaryote looks like bacteria in which a plasma uh, 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 nuclear membrane completely uh, absent, the nuclear material uh, dispersed in the cytoplasm uh, in comparison with eukaryote uh, presence of um, nuclear membrane. But some also prefer to say fungi are mesokaryotic. Why mesokaryotic? What is the word? Because it's mesokaryotic are the organism behave with a special way during nuclear, nuclear division. Uh, as all of us uh, studied um, um, cell division, we know completely that is, um, uh, by, the, by the end of inter, um, uh, by the end of proof phase, uh, nuclear membrane completely disappear, nucleolus completely disappear, uh, chromosomes started to um, arrange it on equators, um, uh, and after that, anaphase, teleophase, and uh, um, um, uh, finishing of uh, mitotic division. But in fungi, no way. Nuclear membrane completely resistant during um, during um, uh, uh, cell uh, division without any uh, uh, without any uh, 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 disappearance so the nuclear membrane of the uh, fungal organism never disappear by the end of brew phase so chromosome and spindle fibers, blah, 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 completely arranged inside the nuclear membrane. And that is a unique feature for fungi. Also, we have something looks like a spindle bodies in animal. It's called spindle bull bodies. Uh, so uh, during the phylogenetic trees, you can find fungi are very, very close and related to um, animal. So we have here, um, um, uh, mitotic division of uh, a fungus, you will notice that all every uh, uh, phase completely takes place inside the nuclear uh, membrane without disappearance of it. So it meaning fungi are very, very unique in ergosterol and behavior of nucleus during cell division without uh, disappear of uh, nuclear membrane. So we can say it mesokaryotic for fungi. Uh, so uh, fungi characterized by um, um, uh, chitinaceous cell wall, 
and in comparison with bacteria and with um, uh, other groups in plant uh, kingdom, so fungi are not plants anymore, as we mentioned before. Uh, on, the, on the other hand, if we go now to uh, isolate fungi or growing fungi and bacteria, you will notice a very important thing and put it in your mind because um, uh, bacteria is preferring high content um, of nitrogen in bacterial medium and very low content of carbon in comparison with um, uh, fungi. Fungi preferring high content of carbon and very, very low content of uh, nitrogen. So again, bacteria preferring in its isolation or growing medium, we will find betone. Uh, we will find different nitrogenous source with high amount in comparison with carbon source. This is not recommended for fungi because fungi preferring carbon source in compar high carbon content in comparison with nitrogen content. So that is why we will find something looks like Chubbix uh, docs medium uh, contain about um, 30 uh, uh, gram of, uh, of sucrose in comparison with a two gram of sodium nitrate, high content of carbon, low content of nitrogen source. So put these um, facts in your mind. So you should think like a fungus. Why? If you're gonna to isolate fungi, you should think like this fungus. Recently, uh, uh, authors and scientists discovered that there is a communication and uh, uh, talking uh, away between trees through fungi. Oh my God. So plants all the time talk to each other through fungi? Yes. So we said entangled life, how, they, uh, how fungi can connect between different trees, different plants through the big, big, huge inter, uh, internet underground. So this is a very, 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 important thing and very very uh, new uh, new point of research just released two years ago or something like that so if you're interested to go after that it will be great for you to work on uh, a new uh, research uh, point uh, so what is the difference between uh, isolation and recording recording fungi is meaning you are gonna to just record a fungus, you can't isolate it in pure culture. This is maybe due to, or um, is referred to many problem for isolation. Maybe this fungus is ectomycorrhizal fungi, which should be growing in association with um, tree roots and or other plant roots. So you can't got it in, um, uh, on pure culture in your lab. Uh, some fungi, um, are pathogenic, looks like plant pathogen, you can't go it in pure culture, so you are going to recording it. So meaning reporting or recording fungi is referred to the group of fungi, you can't isolate it in pure culture. You just saw it in, in the field, uh, you just saw it in your lab, it's growing on, um, uh, on um, um, a plant, it's a biotroph or necrotroph, so you're just recording it. One of the most important reference for us as a mycologist is the collecting and recording fungi which published by British Mycological Society in uh, 2004. Uh, it's a, a big guide uh, edited by Richard um, uh, Hiffey, so you can get it from uh, internet. It's a very important one. You can use it in, uh, uh, in a good way to uh, collecting and recording macrofungi. We are talking here about macrofungi, basidiomycota, uh, ectomycorrhiza, uh, macroascomycetes, how you can collect and record them uh, in comparison with other uh, microfungi. So isolation is considered one of the basic skills in mycology. If you are a mycologist and you cannot able to isolate a uh, fungi in pure culture, you are not a mycologist at all. So if you are working on um, a fungi with um, uh, um, um, potentiality to degrade uh, plastic, to degrade um, cellulose, something like that, 
If you can't isolate it in pure culture, you are not um, a mycologist. So isolation is considered one of the basic skills in mycology. You should isolate your fungi in pure culture. So isolation techniques are numerous and they can be quite effective in yielding. Just the mold one won't. If you need a special uh, fungus, as I, I, I mentioned before, think like a fungus, so you can easily uh, isolate it. And they can divide it into two broad categories. Both of all categories we are used in our mycological laboratory in Egypt and the world wide. And they are divided into uh, two subtypes or um, uh, the, main, uh, the main types are direct and selective methods. So we have two main um, um, uh, methods, uh, one uh, called direct methods and the other called selective method. Uh, be, um, 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 under them, we can divide it to different subtypes of um, uh, um, uh, selective, um, uh, different uh, subtypes of method also. So, um, we have different bases of isolation, looks like techniques. If you go now to uh, 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 mycology laboratory, uh, you should know which fungus you are going to study, what is the source of your fungus, it is environmental sample or uh, uh, water sample, wood sample, coprophilus sample, whatever. So you should know your, your target, which technique you will use, which medium you will use, and which medium you should be concentrate on my word, think like a fungus. If the fungus is growing on uh, cellulose, you should supplement your medium with native cellulose, with uh, natural cellulose, okay? Uh, if your uh, fungus is came from desert soil, you should work on uh, uh, osmophilic medium, medium with low content of water. If you grow when the fungus came from desert on a medium with high content of water, it will not, not grow at all. So uh, also incubation temperatures, as your fungi is, came from a uh, mountain, it came from desert, it came from uh, a pile of straw stored for many years, so the temperature is very high, so you need to incubate your organism in an uh, incubation temperature very close to its natural habitat. And uh, identification, identification, um, I'm talking about Egypt, here we are a middle and low uh, country, so the, the um, um, what we can say the uh, the era of molecular identification is not accepted for poor uh, scientists. So if you got a uh, 40 or 60 species of fungi and you are gonna to identify it by molecular, you will need uh, to pay a lot of money for that. So uh, the best thing to do, just phenotypic identification up to species level with a good taxonomist. After that, if you got a potent uh, species, a promising species, you can molecularly identify it because it is the real situation. Um, uh, we are not talking here about um, a highly developed country. We are just developing country and the majority of countries looks like us. So direct isolation techniques is meaning direct. Just you take a, a, a simple uh, part from your sample and transfer it to uh, a, a medium, suitable medium. Um, if you are studying mycotoxin producing um, Aspergillus in cheese rumi, Gibna rumi, and or um, 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 fungi growing uh, on um, mushroom in supermarket or fungi growing on strawberry in, uh, in markets, you will find the fungus is growing as a huge mycelium on the fruit. So you can easily transfer that fungus by your needle into a suitable medium in your lab. So to do that, your needle should be moistened with uh, a slight amount of sterile glycerol. You need to sterile glycerol and just wetting your uh, needle by it, 
this is will make your needle very wet and it able to catch spores from your sample easily and you can transfer it to your medium and after that few days you will find your fungus is growing and after that you can transfer it to another battery but take care you are working here with fungi so you should add some antibiotic to uh, suppress the growth of bacteria and if you started antibiotic you will know antibiotics are concerning temperature antibiotics classified into two categories thermolabile which affected by temperature so you can't add this type of uh, antibiotics before sterilization not allowed because it if you add them before sterilization will be they will be break down completely uh, in sterilization so it is not allowed for that but you can add some other antibiotics looks like chloramphenicol and um, uh, to your medium before sterilization because it's thermostable um, <laughs> a very simple thing you can do it by using lactic acid lactic acid is lowering the pH of the medium and it is not allowed uh, for bacteria to grow in low uh, pH so uh, before uh, pouring your medium into uh, blades you just add two uh, mainly sterilized lactic acid to your uh, sterilized medium and bore it if you add lactic acid to the medium before sterilization your medium will never solidified at all because the bh will be decreased and agar cannot solidify the medium so again lactic acid two milli of lactic acid per liter of your medium your fungal medium you can add them before boring your plates just after sterilization okay don't forget that one of the most important method for all mycologists is came to the light by World Cup in 1950. Uh, uh, so you can find it easily in Nature Journal. It's um, uh, July 15th in 1950. It's called Soil Blade Method for Isolation of uh, Fungi from Soil. It's just a very simple method for isolation of fungi. Just take few grams. 0.1 or 0.2 gram of soil directly and spread it uh, over the, uh, the the medium for isolation but indeed it is not recommended for um, uh, slow growing fungus why because it's fast growing fungi looks like zygomycetes um, um, it's growing quickly fastly and cover all slow growing fungi so you will lose slow growing fungi so it is not recommended uh, for uh, if, if you if, if you study um, a very slow growing uh, fungal group looks like ascomycetes you will never catch them by this method so we are preferring dilution bleed method uh, in comparison with this so another way if you're gonna to study some other uh, environmental sample looks like um, uh, uh, wood um, uh, uh, hair uh, degrading fungi uh, coprophilus fungi uh, the most uh, better method uh, is the uh, moist chamber uh, which used to incubate your uh, uh, original sample uh, with a suitable moist uh, this is takes place inside glass container desiccator uh, battery dishes uh, right now we are using plastic um, uh, containers you know looks like uh, yogurt uh, cups or something like that uh, you just uh, put um, uh, in the in, in, in the bottom of your uh, container a filter paper style filter paper just for keeping moist we are using right now um, a blend gel uh, or um, something looks like um, uh, sanitary uh, tissue or something like that uh, this is will uh, keep um, uh, the chamber uh, humid also some guys using um, water agar uh, 
20 gram of agar per liter and uh, they can uh, they trial it sure and they use it for uh, as a substratum and they can put uh, their um, um, environmental sample looks like wood looks like um, um, uh, dung uh, looks like uh, um, uh, paper whatever they can uh, do but it, it's a kind of a technique need careful during preparation careful uh, very careful to be very careful during incubation because you should um, examine uh, your sample daily to, uh, to 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 notice the changes uh, of the community uh, in your sample so moist chamber looks like that are used as i, I as i mentioned before for dung for wood uh, for uh, fruits, for seeds, whatever you want, you should work with them uh, in that way. If you have a fruit and you are um, uh, um, um, suggested it infected by a fungus, you just uh, incubate it in a um, moist chamber and after two or three days, the fungus will grow uh, over it and you can bake it by uh, your uh, estrile needle. Uh, so uh, you can use it to uh, growing your fungus and after that using a direct transfer uh, directly uh, to um, uh, a pure uh, battery dishes with uh, um, different types of media if you preferring that. Uh, also, uh, there is a different types of uh, uh, treatment looks like um, immersing in uh, commercial uh, uh, sodium hypochlorite solution looks like colorex uh, immersion in alcohol. Uh, it, it, it depends upon the thickness of your sample. Uh, if you're going to study the fungi uh, invading um, uh, or uh, colonizing a part of wood. So you need to just uh, get rid of all bacteria, get rid of all um, uh, subrobic fungi, and you need just wood degrading uh, fungi, uh, the true one. So you're immersing your sample in uh, uh, sterile water, after that colorex, uh, um, five percentage or seven percentage or three percentage about, uh, according your technique, and after that, distilled water after that it's an all based on your uh, sample thickness uh, you can't immerse it in uh, in ethanol for five minutes and it, it just um, a, a blunt uh, leaf so all the organisms outside and inside the leaf will die so take care sickness is a very important uh, limiting factor here for surface sterilization also if you are gonna to study uh, community, as I mentioned before, here um, 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 different uh, families of uh, dung fungi. I have been studied in my PhD uh, uh, on uh, dung. Uh, uh, if you notice, uh, the, they start growing after two days. As a group of pyloblacy, it's pyloblus and the bilera and zygomycetes here, and they started to. Uh, growing after two days and they extended for more than uh, 90, uh, 90 days, three months. So you should follow up your sample, pick up them by different uh, isolation technique and uh, you should know some of them, you will completely cannot germinate, ger isolate them in pure culture in your lab if you study dung fungus. There is another method called direct plating and just take a, as I mentioned before, the, your sample and put it directly on the medium. Uh, in some cases, you just need to apply surface sterilization. If you have a, a lot, a lot of uh, adhering spores, uh, uh, also you can uh, boring uh, uh, melted uh, cooled agar over the materials if you like to do that you can do that but after surface sterilization this will be uh, uh, 
not good technique because it's as I mentioned before, it looks like a workup technique. It will uh, in, uh, enable the uh, fast growing fungi uh, to overgrow on uh, slow growing fungi. Um, uh, we are using um, uh, a kind of um, a bacteriostatic solution is called uh, um, rosbingen, and rosbingen is a kind of a stain. It looks like a, um, uh, it's a um, uh, pink color, and we are using it uh, by a concentration one bare uh, 15,000. So it's a very, uh, sl uh, very small concentration because um, rosbingel is inhibited the fungal growth also. If you increase your concentration of rosbingel, during preparation of your medium, you will kill fungi and bacteria. So take care of them, uh, of the concentration. Also, we have a dichlorine. It's called, uh, the commercial name is called butrine. It's used to uh, inhibit the fast growing uh, fungi. Uh, we have uh, ebrodione uh, also. All of them are different kinds of um, chemicals used to inhibit uh, what we said, uh, fast-growing organisms. Uh, so uh, you can just use them. Looks like um, uh, um, um, a supplementary of your medium. If you're seeking a certain organism, uh, ebrodione is used with uh, dichlorine for uh, isolation and, and identification of genus Fusarium. So dichlorine is used only with uh, other uh, medial, uh, media, uh, uh, medium composition to isolate xerophilic fungi, which be referring uh, low water activity. So you just select your uh, method and your medial, uh, medium composition based on your target. Here we what, what we said dilution uh, technique. All of you are already know it and it's it's very important for uh, the majority of you uh, researching soil fungi because I wondered some of you just bring five gram of soil and put it in uh, 50 ml of water and said it's a concentration of one uh, one tenth. I think it's very very wrong to do that. You know you you need to start with. Uh, um, um, very very uh, big amount of soil i mean um, 500 gram because it's it, you are you are working on a chance uh, if you start with a small amount of soil 5 gram per uh, 5 gram per 50 milli uh, who give you the trust that 5 gram is contain all the representative taxa in this environment so you should start with huge amount of, of uh, big uh, size of soil, uh, big weight of soil, um, 500 gram, and you can use it very concentrated to transfer your uh, serial dilution. So don't forget that 5 gram, 50 gram, 100 gram are not good for isolation of soil microorganism. You need to use uh, another uh, Wait uh, for your study. Uh, so uh, you can using that for your uh, study uh, of soil of uh, different uh, groups of ecological fungi. If you you studying um, uh, rice straw decomposing fungi, rice straw uh, um, uh, leaf litter decomposing fungi, you can start. If you have a weight, you can start looks like that. Uh, so uh, dilution technique is uh, we mentioned the result of the if, of um, uh, 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 dilution technique is uh, already uh, expressed as CFU or colony forming unit because we are not know uh, which part of the fungus give it this uh, colony is it a spore or mycelium. So we are not confirmed that. So we said colony forming unit. So colony forming unit give us a reasonable 
solution because we are not know which part of the fungus growing into a colony. Uh, so if you using a concentration looks like uh, uh, one per thousand uh, and you got five CFU, you will multiply your uh, result by 1000. So you suppose that your original concentration of fungi is 5000 uh, colony. Another method for isolation is related to endophytic fungi. Endophytic fungi are very, very important, uh, potent uh, group uh, of um, uh, symbiotic organism or symbiotic fungi. Uh, it's uh, inhabited um, uh, the major, all plants all over the world and without give any external pathogenic symptoms. So it's just a kind of symbiosis because it, if it give any pathogenic symptoms, it is not endophyte anymore. It's a pathogen. So a lot of professors consider them uh, a kind of pathogen. No way. It's a, a group of sym symbiotic organisms. It's produced the same chemical compound produced by the plant as proved by several scientists in China. A lot of papers is published in this uh, area uh, since uh, uh, 2007. So, um, if you not trust in your mind, you just check the published work. So how we can isolate the endophytic fungi? You just collect your plant sample. And you should know that this endophytic fungi is another way we are using to conserve plant. If uh, Amira, a professor Amira is studying um, uh, a, a pharma uh, a compound uh, from a certain plant and this plant is written very rare or certain and if she went to uh, uh, to the uh, protected area and collected this uh, collected this plant over collected it this plant will completely disappear from the world why because she want to uh, need uh, to extract a few milligrams from the active principle of this plant but what about if Amira went there and just took um, uh, five gram of the plant and back to her lab and isolate a fungi associated with this plant internally inside this plant and she will find sure, she will find sure a fungus produce the same uh, 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 chemical substance as the plant. So she collecting the sample, she just wash it in running water for 10 minutes to remove all the external and um, uh, spores uh, associated with this plant. And after that, she uh, using uh, ethanol uh, for uh, washing the plant or for uh, surface sterilization of the plant for one minute. And after that, using uh, distilled water to remove the, the traces of ethanol. After that, uh, sodium uh, hypochlorite again for five minutes. It's based on, again, sickness of the plant. If the plant is sick, five minutes is enough. If the plant is very thin, just one minute or 30 seconds is enough. After that, she should using a sterile water to wash to remove the traces of sodium hypochlorite. And after that, uh, ethanol again, sterile water, and she just drop it, the sample for dryness on a, a very, uh, um, uh, on a filter uh, paper, sterile filter paper, and she can uh, cut it into pieces and inoculate uh, the battery dishes uh, by the uh, basis of the plant. Uh, she can use different types of medium. Uh, for fungi, we are using chabic seed extract agar, potato dextrose agar, malt extract agar, potato carrot agar, oatmeal agar, 
all of isolation medium, we should use rosbingel and chloramphenicol for uh, inhibition of bacteria. And after one week up to months or two months in some cases, you will find your colony is emerging from your uh, segment. If your work is pure, the fungi is emerging from your segment. If not, it will emerging from the uh, peripheral of the petri dishes as a contamination. So if you're going to notice these petri dishes, you can easily uh, recognize that this, the work is very pure. And after that, you can just uh, transfer uh, your emerging uh, colony into pure culture for uh, more identification or for slant for preservation. How you can isolate fungi from air? For air, uh, all the method is based on the position or what we said sedimentation. You just have your petri dishes with suitable medium and just open it for a certain time, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you want, and hang your hand above your head for 10 minutes, open your uh, petri dishes lid, uh, sedimentation will take place uh, from air on the petri dishes and after that you cover and incubate it. This is the uh, method is very, very uh, differ from a person to another. If this person is short, is another tall uh, for the time period, uh, five minutes, 15 minutes, um, what kind of uh, the place how much of, of uh, volume of uh, air inside this place. So people as uh, um, uh, in 1970 or maybe in 1975 working with um, uh, air sampler. Air sampler is a, a, a equipment is just suck a huge amount or determined amount of air in the room or in the open air. Um, 500 liter, um, 1000 liter, 100 liter, based on your uh, adjustment for the equipment, and it concentrated on the battery dish. So, this is uh, one of the most uh, recent microbio air sampler. You just put your battery dishes, uh, uh, as you notice, in the, uh, on the uh, left part of the second uh, photo uh, and uh, just cover it was uh, by the uh, uh, metal lid and adjust your uh, sampler uh, uh, on the um, how many liter do you prefer to collect from the place it's based upon the size and the uh, the size of the place the volume of the place how many meters uh, of the place you prefer to collect your sample. And after that, you just run it. It will completely uh, suck uh, air and concentrate it on the battery dishes. Uh, and you can uh, calculate your colony. It's growing, it looks like that. If it's bacteria, if it's yeast, if it's fungi, and you can use uh, the manufacturer uh, equation designed to give you how many CFU bear 100, uh, 100 liter uh, you already uh, collected. For another uh, group of fungi, we have just selective isolation techniques. Selective isolation techniques are used for certain group of fungi, not for all. And one of them is called bait technique, hunting technique. It's used for aquatic fungi. Aquatic fungi here is completely different from aquatic derived fungi. We have both, uh, we have two uh, different words or uh, terminology. Aquatic fungi, this is a group of fungi belonging to Ketridiomycota and Oomycota. And my presentation last week is called Oomycota is right now called Chromistium fungal analogues. It is not true fungi. So both of groups are uh, found in ponds, river, sewage, whatever, but you, you need to bathe them. 
if you're gonna to isolate them in a pure culture in your um, laboratory as soil fungi, they will not grow. You will find another group of fungi growing on your petri dishes, and you can say you can call them uh, aquatic derived fungi. Aquatic derived fungi, those fungi are came from soil just transferred by air to the aquatic environment. So you will find aspergillus, you will find penicillium, you will find the rhizobus in your petri dishes, and you can say it's aquatic fungi. It is not aquatic fungi, it's aquatic derived fungi. But aquatic, true aquatic fungi, you should use what we said, baiting technique. Baiting technique is using different baits. Uh, different baits looks like hemp seed, mustard, uh, flax seed, uh, grass leaves, bowling grains, uh, cellophane, sesame seeds, uh, human hairs, whatever. You just take um, uh, these seeds, just um, boil them uh, in water, and uh, you should, uh, as I mentioned, uh, trial them or boil them, and uh, take a uh, few amount of them into a petri dishes filled with um, um, 30 milli of your sample, your uh, river sample or your bond sample, whatever uh, you want uh, to examine. And uh, after that, you should incubate your petri dish in dark. Why? Because if you don't incubate your petri dishes in dark, Euglena will growing, algae will growing, uh, so you should put your petri dishes in dark. Don't forget that, in dark. If you grow and get in, in light, no way. After three days, you will find all the baits you used, sesame uh, greens, uh, flax greens, uh, hemp seeds covered with algal blooms. So also you should change water uh, regularly. Uh, just um, prepare a series of sterile water and come to your original petri dish. Get rid of the uh, of the original water. Wash your seeds well, which already uh, started to colonize mycelium, and transfer it into sterile uh, petri dishes with sterile water. This is help the sexual uh, um, sexual uh, bodies. Of the uh, of the fungus to uh, develop, uh, I mean, Anseridia and Oogona, and we are using them for identification of aquatic fungi. If you not uh, change uh, clean water for your sample, uh, Anseridia and Oogonia will not develop in a good way. So um, here, uh, one of my petri dishes uh, um, with sesame um, grains. It's covered with um, uh, aquatic uh, fungi. Uh, I think some species of Aclea or Abudu Aclea or whatever, but you notice that is, is a water is clean, the, the fungus is growing in a good way, no uh, algal blooms around the seeds, so you are studying in a good way. On the other hand, if you study uh, um, wood and uh, drifted wood, uh, from the marine uh, environment. Um, this is called marine fungi. Marine fungi is not fungi. If you if you collect sample from Suez Canal or Mediterranean Sea water sample and go to uh, isolate it on a petri dishes, you will get some aspergillus, some penicillium, blah, 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 and they are not marine fungi. Marine fungi are the fungus, are the fungi group which completes their life cycle in marine water, in wood, uh, on uh, seagrasses deposit, or something like that. So if you collect your drifted wood sample, you should incubate it with a sterile sea water to allow for these marine fungi to grow on, on the wood, to complete their life cycle on, on the wood. So if you work on... Um, uh, mangrove on um, uh, pneumatophores of mangrove as example, you should wash them well, running water and uh, making your surface sterilization in a way uh, in a good way and transfer them into marine sterile water. And 
incubate them for three months and follow them weekly. If you notice a growing fungi, you should transfer it to your medium. Which medium? Medium containing sea water. Do not allow it to use medium with tap water. <laughs> the fungus will not grow at all. Okay? Don't forget, think like a fungus. If the fungus growing in the sea, you should containing sea water inside your medium. If the fungus is growing on uh, dung, you should use rabbit dung agar. That is the strategy to treating fungi. Another uh, technique for baits using uh, nematodes. If you are studying nematophagus fungi, fungi which destroy nematodes. So this fungi need what? Nesto cheese? Roam cheese? It need nematodes. So you can extract nematodes from uh, cattle uh, dung and you can support your uh, uh, source by it. And after one week, two weeks, you will find nematodes uh, borders covered by um, uh, fungi. So you can isolate it if it um, subrobic. But if it endoparasitic, you will not able to isolate it. You will notice it and record it by your camera, by your measurement, whatever, but you can't isolate it if it into parasitic. So uh, we have different techniques for isolation of, uh, of uh, nematophagus fungi, uh, soil sprinkling method, soil dilution method, uh, barn and funnel technique, and barn and funnel techniques is used, as I told before, we are using feces of um, uh, of uh, cows, whatever, and we allow to extract from them uh, nematodes. And after that, we take our nematodes and put it in the soil uh, to enhance the nematode, uh, nematophagus fungi to grow on the um, uh, uh, on the uh, body of uh, nematodes. On the another technique, we are talk about philoblane uh, fungi. Uh, philoblane fungi uh, are fungi very, very uh, associated with leaf of uh, plants. So uh, one of these uh, uh, methods we are using is serial dilution technique. So you can collect uh, fresh healthy leaves uh, from uh, different ages in your sterile uh, polyethylene bags, cut discs from every leaf using a sterile cork borer uh, and transfer about 50 discs to 100 uh, milli of sterile water, blah, 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 and doing your serial dilution technique. And after that, you can count your colonies and isolate them in pure culture form. Um, but you will facing just a, a trouble how you can calculate see if you bear um, squared centimeter of the leaf. So uh, total number of spore in one milli, as example, uh, on the total area of 50 disc multiplied by two, why we are in the, in the previous slide, we said we will using 50 cork borer uh, squares. So each square of uh, each square of that um, is has two surfaces, upper and lower. So you should buy your uh, result by two because it's not upper alone because it's a fungi present on the upper and on the lower. So uh, area of leaf disc. Uh, is equal to by uh, r uh, squared so r is the radius of disk in centimeter uh, some guys is using a planimeter uh, which already used uh, uh, equipment to estimate the uh, total area of the leaf but if you don't um, have it you can use our old technique it's called uh, a squared uh, mainly paper uh, uh, um, and we are use it in in a very simple way. You just put your leaf and just lining its outer line by your uh, 
by your pen and after that cut it cut the paper uh, on the same uh, line so you have unknown area which already uh, drawn in on the paper and you can use a, a, a squared um, a, a, a well-known square area by uh, define 10 square by 10 so you have uh, 10 by 10 is 100 um, uh, milli so you can uh, cut 10 by 10 centimeter and weight them by your balance so you have area with known area with known weight and you have unknown area of this leaf so you can you multiply uh, uh, two sides against one so you will have known area right now so 100 um, squared uh, uh, 10 by 10 you have known area and after you cut 10 by 10 and weight them by your balance you will know um, uh, I will uh, weight so area and non weight against uh, unknown uh, unknown area so you can use it easily in your lab to know how many CFU bear your uh, leaf. Also, we are using a selective isolation technique for root associated fungi. So mycorrhiza, as you know, is meaning plant roots fungi and we have uh, our biscular mycorrhiza and um, uh, or uh, we said uh, uh, scientists said it's endomycorrhiza and it's associated with about 80 percentage of uh, of plant certain plant families uh, not recorded mycorrhiza at all uh, looks like kinobudiesi as i remember uh, so uh, also we have ectomycorrhiza which associate with about less than 10 percentage of the plant especially evergreen trees so how you can collect your sample you should know how you can collect your sample beside the uh, each plant we are using this technique uh, to collect our uh, sample and we collect roots uh, very fine roots and mix it together and soil to mix it together and to uh, uh, start to using uh, sieving technique to extract mycorrhiza or clearing and staining technique uh, to uh, later on to identify them un under microscope. So to examine uh, endomycorrhiza uh, inside roots, we are working right now with roots so you should clearing by heating uh, in 10 percentage koh uh, this is to uh, soften uh, the root and uh, after that you start to uh, uh, staining with triban blue uh, miscellane blue whatever uh, you prefer just to give you an indication uh, about the uh, colonization rate of the root uh, and also you can preparing semi permanent uh, semi permanent uh, 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 slide uh, by using uh, polyphenyl alcohol uh, based mountain uh, we said it's a polyphenyl uh, lactic acid glycerol, uh, glycerol uh, uh, mountain it uh, give you um, many years slide you can examine it later on but it's preferred to examine your uh, slide as fresh as it can uh, to uh, isolate it um, here it's it just describe how you can do that with uh, roots but what already we are gonna to do that uh, with um, uh, uh, soil we are sieving, we used sieving technique. Sieving technique is used to isolate um, uh, mycorrhiza, uh, used uh, three set of sieves, 
uh, from the, the largest one to the smallest one to isolate the, uh, uh, the fraud body if it present up to uh, a small, um, the smallest uh, spore of the, uh, of the fungus. Uh, also, uh, here we are talking about rhizosphere and rhizoplane. Uh, what is about the fungi associated with the uh, rhizosphere, uh, the area around the sphere, how you can isolate it, uh, how you can isolate fungi associated with the root surface, what we said, the rhizoplane. It's, it's need uh, uh, washing a lot, a lot, a lot, and after that, you can keep the root uh, on your uh, isolation medium. So the spores associated with the root and the firmly attached to it, it will be growing as a rhizoplane. So a lot of technique here is used and you should think like a fungus. If you're gonna to isolate it from the root and you need to isolate the rhizoplane, you should concentrate it on your washing technique. If you're gonna to isolate the rhizosphere, so just uh, take in your mind, shake well. You should use shaker for that for 15 minutes and prepare serial dilution. Also, uh, uh, if we are studying entomobasogenic fungi, uh, entomobasogenic fungi is fungi is growing on um, insect. So a lot of techniques have been used. Uh, one of them is immersion method. If you have killed the uh, um, bodies of insect, uh, locust, looks like garad or something like that, you can put it in soil. Uh, and after a week, two weeks, you can uh, notice a growing fungi on it. You can uh, tr direct transfer it directly. Or if you have a, already um, in, infected uh, uh, insect with a fungus, if this fungus is not pathogenic, it's just subrobic. You can easily transfer it to your uh, petri dish. If it's pathogenic, you just need to record it. So also we have wash, washing method, soil dilution plating method, and insect baiting, as I mentioned before. And you can use your uh, insect looks like as that as a bait. You can put it in the soil, and it will collect all uh, fungi able to grown on it. We have another technique called stress techniques. Stress techniques meaning a sel sel very selective technique used to isolate certain group of organisms. I mean, if you are uh, grow, uh, if you are uh, working or studying dung inhabiting or coprophilus fungi, some spores of the group of pyloblasi never grow in your petri dish until you are uh, treat them with a special treatment looks like what already happened for uh, the spore in the digestive tract of animal. I mean, spoiling with NaOH or uh, bincreatine or something like that. So the, the, the spore dormancy will be break and you, you can able to grow them on petri dish. Without this, you will never growing this group of pyloblasi, uh, either bilera or uh, pyloblus. So um, other uh, group of fungi is producing um, uh, spores. This spore already uh, never germinate, um, uh, um, never germinate um, uh, except they uh, exposed to fire or freezing. Without fire or freezing, these, these spores never germinate. So they need special treatment all the time. Also, we are using um, in some uh, time um, uh, heat uh, to uh, uh, break dormancy of a spore. Uh, in my PhD, I was working on ascomycetes in Egypt. So I'm treated my soil by alcohol. It's alcohol immersion technique. It's an um, uh, old technique uh, published by Warcraft and Baker in 1963. I immersed my soil sample in 60% uh, um, uh, ethanol for 10 up to 20 minutes. After that, I make serial dilution and I work to isolate uh, ascospore fungi, which are forming a fruit body 
uh, all uh, other fungi killed by ethanol except this um, organism. So this paper, you can find it in nature. It's called occurrence of dormant ascomycetes in uh, soil. Um, and it's used ethanol, um, as I mentioned in, um, in my talk. Uh, what about rock inhabiting fungi? Rock inhabiting fungi are a group of uh, black uh, fungi is um, living inside the rock, not in the cracks of the rock, because it's we already try to doing that, but all the time we are failed to do that because it's we got the uh, fungi growing in the cracks. But to isolate black fungi looks like that, you should doing um, uh, a special technique uh, um, looks like uh, surface sterilization of the rock uh, by uh, 90 or absolute alcohol to reduce contamination after that you should uh, resin uh, your uh, rock with um, uh, uh, 0 0.001 percentage of 2020 uh, or physiological uh, saline and after that ground your uh, rock into powder uh, and suspended in, 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 in sterile water, and you should use a very specific medium for that. This medium is called dichlorine rosbingel, uh, rosbingel agar, and the dichlorine is inhabit fast growing fungi. Also, we can use another uh, medium, it's called uh, one tenth malt extract agar, which supplemented uh, with manganese um, uh, sulfate, uh, as mentioned by. Uh, um, uh, many authors, uh, many uh, authors in, 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 in their studies. So these fungi are very, very potent and they can used for uh, uh, as indicator for climate change and uh, uh, due to formation of highly amount of melanin. And you can find them uh, in, um, in the very, very, uh, I, I mean, sorry, uh, you will find a lot of also worldwide studying them in Egypt. We have one or two uh, published work on that, but no one interested to study them. But in Italy, uh, Laura Selbman or, um, and Isola, they are doing a great work there in Italy. Uh, how you can doing some selective medium? You should doing um, selective medium if you are study fungi degrade uh, human hair you sh you should have uh, keratin in your medium uh, uh, if you are using um, if you're studying the fungi degrade cellulose you should using native um, uh, cellulose looks like cotton looks like cellophane if you are uh, using, um, um, if you try to isolate uh, fungi producing aflatoxin, looks like uh, Aspergillus flavus, Aspergillus uh, parasiticus. You should using Aspergillus flavus, parasiticus agar. Uh, selective isolation uh, of uh, of fusarium, as I mentioned before, Chabex, Ebrodione, Dichlorine agar. Uh, media of osmophilic fungi, looks like Dichlorine glycerol 18. Agar. So you should think like a fungus, not collect your sample from the desert and growing it on malt or BDA without salt, without dichlorine, without glycerol, because your fungi, you will isolate normal biota, not xerophilic, not desert fungi. Understood? So also selective temperature. As I mentioned before, you should incubate your uh, battery dishes on the same on the same temperature of your environment. If it's high temperature, you should incubate them on high temperature. It is not logic to collect seaweeds from Mediterranean water uh, on the on the winter to isolate uh, algae colos fungi and incubate your battery dishes in 25 degrees centigrade. How it come? You should incubate it at five or six as the sea water temperature during this period. So it is very important to do that because you have a, a, a different groups of fungi, cytrophils, uh, mesophils, and thermophils you should uh, incubate uh, within them. So if you like to uh, read further readings, uh, I think this great book 
of uh, biodiversity of fungi, uh, which edited by my friend uh, Gregory Muller uh, of Chicago Botanical Garden. Uh, you will find it easily and you will find different chapters concerning um, uh, uh, different groups, uh, ecological groups of fungi, how you can study them and how you can prepare medium for catching them. It's a good book. I am recommended it for uh, more reading and, and um, uh, uh, understanding biodiversity of fungi. Uh, on the last part of my presentation, I will talk about fungal conservation. Right now, I'm talking about isolation, uh, recording, uh, data. So what about fungal conservation? Fungal conservation as a, a movement started in maybe uh, 19, uh, in 2000, um, uh, um, uh, 20, oh, uh, uh, 2010 in uh, European uh, Mycologist Conference in uh, Greece. And uh, David Mentor considered one of the leader in this uh, field, and he uh, founded the um, um, International Society for Fungal Conservation. You can find it in the, in the second uh, link here. And we are keeping all the time said fungi are biodiverse too. Uh, it is not just animal and the plant. Uh, people all over the world uh, conserve plant and the animal. They try to conserve everything except the fungi. And if you look at the logo of the United Nations Decade on Biodiversity, which, alhamdulillah, which I'm happy because its logo this, uh, will, will end this year from uh, uh, to, uh, 2010 to 2020, 10 years, uh, go through this logo, you will never find fungi. You will find um, fish, bird, human, tree, bee, beer, um, and no fungi. And we send a lot, a lot, a lot of emails for CBD executive secretary, and they promise us they will change the logo in the uh, 2021. We hope that. We are already established uh, Arab Society for Fungal Conservation in 2013 at Botany Department, Faculty of Science, West Carolina University, uh, for the first time in the Middle East and North of Africa and Arab countries. There is a NGO, and you will find the, uh, the uh, website of the uh, Arab Society in, in, uh, of, uh, fungal, uh, for Fungal Conservation. So, there is a big question I already uh, met by all of you in my conferences and in my uh, online meeting. Are we going to conserve basogenic fungi? If it's basogenic, we should conserve it? Yes, we should. If it even basogenic, why? We have different categories of conservation. Let me discuss it later, but Basogenic fungi looks like plant basogen and human basogen fungi. Why we should conserve them? Number one, is this question from human point of view or planet point of view? Is it your question? Oh my God. What about moral issue of Rio Convention? Rio Convention is try to conserve all organisms all over the world on the planet. So it's a planet point of view. So if you're going to conserve good guys, you should conserve bad guys also, because it's not working for uh, good guys and kill bad guys. We are not alone in this planet, human point of view. Oh, yes, we are not alone. We are working, uh, we, we are living here with birds, with insects, with fungi, with bacteria, with coronavirus, wh whatever. So world population is about 7 billion people what about the fungi? And human move faster, further around the world. Fungi of all kinds are landing in new habitats. So human is transfer fungi, not fungi fly uh, by uh, their wings to uh, to stay there. So also climate change may stress species of all kinds, making them less able to resist and recover from infection. So. If we are right now talking about um, climate change, certain species of plants, certain species of animal, what about certain species of fungi? If the plant 
is uh, if uh, ectomycorrhizal fungi is associated with a plant and this plant is completely affected by climate change what will be happen for this ectomycorrhizal fungi so is there any plan b no no plan b we should conserve all type of fungi we should conserve all type of creatures no one is good no one is bad it's a moral planet point of view of uh, Rio Convention. So, foliar microbiota of this plant is highly threatened tree. So, if this plant completely disappeared, what about microbiota associated with this, this plant leaf? It's hectic. Also, looking after the bad guy is the conservation of pathogenic fungi. You can read that by uh, our friend Tom May uh, in uh, Australia. He published a great work uh, concerning uh, plant conservation there. So we already established uh, Arab Society for Fungal Conservation by a lot, a lot, a lot of um, activities, um, more than uh, 16 workshops, uh, two international conference, uh, different training course in different localities in Egypt, and uh, um, uh, doing our uh, best to transfer the idea of fungal conservation to the new generation. So Arab Society of Fungal Conservation Research Team for 2000, um, 2020, uh, uh, in front of you, there are different categories of student, um, um, uh, different um, uh, categories of professor, looks like Professor Abdul Ghaffar Abu Saud is, is a, 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 he is working for climate change and the effect of climate change of uh, of fungi uh, in Egypt. Professor Amira uh, uh, Darwish uh, is very very uh, uh, talented and working on uh, fungi producing toxinogenic material and the effect of uh, climate change for the, the potentiality of fungi to produce. Um, uh, um, toxinogenic material. Uh, Dr. Basim uh, Balbul, who studied uh, uh, endophytic fungi, Muhammad Abdul Azim, who studied uh, pharmacological and pharmaceutics uh, uh, product of, uh, uh, of uh, fungi. Uh, uh, Fatma um, is studying um, endophytic fungi, how, how can endophytic fungi enhance um, abiotic stress in tomato plant, uh, and um, on, uh, on weed plant, um, uh, um, uh, Sara, Mahmoud, Nagla, all the uh, Heba is studying um, uh, antioxidant uh, producing fungi, and uh, Nihal is studying uh, 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 different categories of fungi, how they can produce uh, bioactive materials for uh, for human health. A lot, a lot of activities. So if you're interested to join uh, this team, please um, uh, contact us to uh, working with uh, this uh, young energetic team of researcher and the professor who are already taking care of, um, of Egyptian uh, fungi and they able to conserve Egyptian uh, fungi in a good way. Um, uh, so um, one of our product is um, fungi uh, are the orphans of Rio uh, by different languages. Um, I think you can find this poster in, in my research gate page. So you please download it and uh, distribute among your communities. It's by um, Chinese, uh, Japanese, um, Italian, um, uh, Persian, uh, Arabic. So it's the idea how can uh, fungi treated under, under the umbrella of Rio Convention because the Rio Convention very, very keen to conserve plant and animal. What about fungi? So we are all the time orphans of Rio. Uh, so uh, through conservation activity of our society, we declared Egypt National Fungus Day uh, on the 20th of February uh, 2016 in Alexandria, Biblosica, for the first time. Why? Because it's ancient Egyptian are the leader, are the pioneer for conservation of fungi and to study fungi. And I mentioned before, and you will find that in my uh, YouTube channel, how can ancient Egyptian consider the leader of antibiotic production, looks like penicillin, how they can use color derived from lichen 
for painting or for coloring their temples. A lot, a lot of activities. So uh, this year we celebrated in um, the Institute de Egypt uh, uh, under the, the theme uh, how can uh, fungi uh, can fungi uh, save Egypt. Uh, last year in 2019 we celebrated it in Borside. So. Um, 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 there is um, um, a temple of uh, Hathor in Dandara. You will find a basket full with mushroom. So as I mentioned in my last uh, presentation, uh, Egyptian, um, um, uh, ancient Egyptian are the leader of mycology. And we said Egypt, the cradle of mycology. Um, so last part, last slide, how we come by respect versus conservation. If you are a researcher in, um, in a pharmaceutical company and you are going to collect blends to extract a very, very potent material, you will destroy the environment. So if you collect a part of this plant with rare fungus or if you over collect a rare fungus, you need to work on that in a, a good way because fungi if they present this year, maybe next year or on the next century completely disappear. I am talking here about the over collection of uh, morals in USA and the over collection of uh, bolitos in Italy and travels in Italy and um, over collection of travel in, in Egypt on the borderline between Egypt and Libya. So we are facing uh, a big uh, problem. Um, uh, so bioprospecting should be uh, meaning uh, uh, search of natural occurring chemical compound and the biological material, especially in extreme or biodiversity rich environment. We studied that a lot in Santa Catherine uh, uh, protected area uh, as it's um, uh, <coughs> extreme um, uh, habitat, uh, mountainous area and uh, also um, consider one of the uh, rich biodiverse area there and we apply three strategies there so uh, also you can apply the three strategies for conservation of fungi worldwide as mentioned by moore in 1981 you can find a nice book it's called the fungal conservation uh, by moore in 1981 uh, he can conserving the habitat uh, habitats uh, through volunteers. If you are studying the mushroom in Delta, so uh, um, guys uh, uh, over collected, you can go to just guide them how you can pick a sample and leave two for the next year. So it's kind of uh, conserving the habitat by volunteers or in situ conservation. If we are working on medicinal plants, some medicinal plants are hosting for very, very potent entophytic fungi. And some Bedouin collected these medicinal plant for um, uh, their life, for uh, selling them, for whatever. So we should replace this over collection by another uh, income uh, way to, um, uh, to save the plant, which contain very important fungus for us or exceed to conservation how you can collect your sample isolate your sample and you you should uh, um, uh, doing exceed to conservation and we already established fungarium uh, we said it's fungarium of arab society for fungal conservation in south Carolina university it already established many years ago so here is a lot of activities by our team um, how we can uh, concentrate on a plant looks like tenacetum and how our team is going to Bedouin to set for him, please don't over collect this plant uh, or we are using our label uh, or uh, fungi or orphans of, uh, of radio and different uh, awareness presentation for Bedouins uh, by us or by uh, colleagues from Desert Research Center, whatever. And Exceed to conservation, we already have our science at Suez Canal University Fungarium. It's already registered uh, for the uh, World uh, Data Center for Microorganisms. 
three years ago, and right now it is considered the first and last one recorded in Africa. I don't know how, but they said it's uh, just um, um, a chapter is released in 20 and 2020 months ago. He considers Swiss Canadian University of Hungarian is the only one uh, in Africa with um, BBRI in South Africa. So it's a good uh, um, uh, good announcement for us. Also, here you can find how we can use different method of preservation by periodic transfer from slant to slant, by mineral oil slant, distilled water and water agar, freezing, drying, globalization, ultra freezing, different techniques. And we have right now a good expert in that field in our laboratory who already trained in, 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 in um, Italy. So we have different categories of uh, um, techniques for preservation of fungal uh, techniques. But don't forget the reason why a sequence based nomenclature is not useful for fungal anytime soon. Take care because it's every year we know that as fungi is changed the identification from ITS1 to uh, and the ITS4 into beta tabulin into another gene. Um, gene, um, single gene uh, phylogeny is completely uh, changed the classification right now, put us in a big problem. If you uh, deposited your data uh, five years ago in the gene bank uh, by um, uh, ITS1 and ITS4 under uh, a species name called, as example, um, Ketomium nigri color, and they right now used beta tabulin. You will find the name is completely changed to Botryotrichum nigri color, and blah, 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 and then the classification completely changed. So we need more time for that. How you can enter your taxon data if you are recording? I'm talking here, I don't know if it's is um, uh, some of you is working on macro basidiomycetes, but you should uh, write the name looks like that with the scientific uh, name authority, uh, uh, followed by the authors, uh, collection number, you bought your collection number, collection date, location, collector, determiner, who identifies the sample for you, and bought your notes. Uh, this is a sheet from North American Mycoflora, and I, as I mentioned for um, uh, uh, Todd Osmans before, you should say it's mycobiota, not flora, because fungi not are flora anymore. It's just, uh, he said, no, Ahmed, it's just released. We can't change it right now. So if you have a culture in your laboratory, looks like this pack, you can find many numbers. If you start with your left hand number, uh, 22.1 is the date of preparation. If you are keeping mushroom as example or belly rotus in bags in your uh, in your lab, so uh, 20, 20, 10, uh is meaning date of preparation. Bo meaning species. If you say this belly rotus wister, so you will abbreviate it into bo. Uh, My is meaning strain. If you said it's uh, um, IS, it's meaning Ismailia, uh, EG, meaning Egypt, uh, O2 is meaning master tube. If you have this tube in your refrigerator and you, tra you transfer it to your spawn bag, so it should be O2, the tube, tube number two, and uh, 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 C uh, is, a, is, a, is a culture dish. If you if you take your tube number two and grow and get in a culture dish, you design or you write on it C as example. And O1 uh, is liquid bottle if you grow and get in a liquid medium. So if you look at this number, you will know everything about your culture. So we are right now going to establish um, uh, on our um, uh, website, Fungi of Egypt, our uh, deposit request. You will find something like that, species, author, uh, original acronym, 
if you re recorded it in your culture collection as uh, um, M300. So you should say M300, a depositor, Abdul Azim, collector, date of collection. All the information recording your species will be valid uh, for, uh, for you to apply to get your uh, automatic number. So um, uh, thank you, um, and I hope um, to be uh, in contact because it's inshallah uh, on Monday we are going to do doing Aspragillus. If you like, I will uh, doing a vote again uh, concerning that. Uh, thank you, and I will be ready here for five minutes for your question if you like.